hello everyone in this video we would be beginning with the chapter number two of cmt level two and that is additional charting methods before watching this video make sure to check the uh, chapter number one i've linked it in the description box below so we are just going to see what are the other charting methods other than candlesticks and other than line charts what are the other charting methods which are used in the industry even though we have covered most of this in CMT level 1, it is also given again in CMT level 2. So I won't be explaining it in detail since we have already covered it in the uh, level 1 exam. So these are the learning objectives. So what are the uh, alternatives to the candlestick charting? The first thing which we have is a point and figure charting. If you are again not clear with point and figure charting, make sure to check my CMT level 1 playlist. There I have explained the point and figure charting. So point and figure charting looks something like this. This is given in your book as well. Yeah. So this is how a point and figure chart is drawn. So point and figure chart basically does not take an account of time. It takes an account of the price movement. So how is it marked? So let's say there is a box size of 3. So every time my price increases by 3 rupees, then 1x is plotted and so on. So again, if it is increasing by two, 3 rupees again, then one more x is plotted and so on. And whenever there is a reduction in the price by 3 rupees, if 3 is my box size, then an O will be plotted. And if there is more reduction, of 3 rupees and again an O is plotted. So depending on the box size. For example, in the example which is given here, this is the example in your book, the box size is 1. So 50, 51, 52, 53. So every time there is one movement, price movement of 1 rupee or 1 unit, then an X is plotted if the price is increasing by 1 rupee. And if the price is decreasing by 1 rupee, then 1 O is plotted. So if the box size is let's say 10 then the similar then that's how you are going to use it by the change in 10 rupees. So that is our point and figure charting. So the point and figure charting basically does not take time into account. It takes the change in the price movement into account. That is your point and figure charting. After point and figure charting you have okay. So let's just quickly discuss some of the points as well. So on a grid paper, it is plotted. A grid paper basically has that grids which we saw and it only plots pr price changes. It does not take into account any of the time changes. Each square is a box. So a box size is basically how many increments you basically want, right? So box size is basically minimum price movement. That is a must. So if my box size is 3 and my price moved by only 1 rupee, then I will not be marking anything. It will not, I will not be taking into account of it since it is lesser than my box size. So when there is a price movement which is lesser than my box size, then I would not be marking it in my chart and that would not matter to me. Okay, next we have the range bars. Okay, so we also have what is a range box. Before that, this is again about the point and figure charting, horizontal and vertical. You know that uh, whenever I'm plotting O, that means there is a decrease in price. And when there, whenever I'm plotting X, that means there is an increase in size. Range bars. Again, so now again in the range bar, they don't take into account the time. What they take into account is the price range, right? So instead of the time period, they take price range. For example, every time there is a range movement of 10 points then I will make a new bar something like that it is very similar to point and figure charting but the only difference here is that they basically take into account few ranges every time a price movement of 10 rupees happens then one bar will be plotted and again when 10 rupee movement is over then again one bar is plotted so in that situation what happens is that uh, the first bar can only last for one minute. Let's say there was a 10 rupee movement in the first minute itself. So one bar will be closed. Then the next one took 20 minutes for a 10 point movement. So that would be another bar. So there is no specific time period for any particular bar. So that is my range bar. After that, we have the volume scale charts or volume bars. 
if you want to discuss the volume chart or the volume bars then again you can go and see my cmt level one playlist after that we have the tick bars so what exactly is tick bars bars are made with the movement in tick what exactly is tick so tick is basically number of trades so when 10 trades take place a bar is created 120 uh, let's say again when 10 trades are created then another bar is created so tick bars basically take into account the number of trades and obviously volume scaled bars take into account the volume So they take that um, whenever this particular amount of volume of shares are traded, then a new bar is plotted and something like that. Uh, the reason why I'm not discussing this chapter in detail is because again, I've cov covered it in the CMT level one video. So you can go on my channel and you can check the level one playlist and you can revise the concepts if you want to. We come to the last concept of this chapter that is market profile. So what exactly is market profile? So market profile is basically when you are going to see the buyers and sellers and try to analyze them. So buyers and seller trade around a particular price, right? And there is an imbalance between the two. When there is an imbalance between the two, that's when the price basically moves, right? So let's take an example. For example, let me show you the example which is there in the book yeah so look at this for a second so this is basically a euro usd pair so this is a forex market example a euro usd pair and try just look at this then i will read a particular line the trader would plot price on the vertical axis as in figure okay the trading day will be divided into time periods with the notation and colors so for example, A is basically representing 8 to 8.30, B is representing 8.30 to 9, C is next 30 minutes and so on. So like that, they are. Uh, so each alphabet is representing the half an hour. Okay. As this process continues throughout the day, price or prices that are touched in many of the time periods become obvious. So whatever price has touched in that particular time period against those time periods, the time would be marked. Let's say the price was trading near 1897, then A would be marked. The price also traveled between 1886, then again A. So that would be the range. Now C is from here to here. I can see C starting here and C over here. So this was the trading range for during that time and D. So wherever D is, this was the trading range for D and so on so this is what is the market profile so that's it with this chapter you were just supposed to discuss what are the alternatives of plotting on a chart let me conclude the chapter individual traders and technicians modify and personalize all charting methods to best meet their personal trading styles and to capture the information most appropriate for the security that they are trading charts are the technicians tools it is helpful to become familiar with the various charting techniques and the principles behind them. Once you have understood the basics, you will be able to customize charts to best meet your needs.